going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack, and we got another great episode of that Simple Man's Comics and Friends, that flagship podcast for our channel. If there's one audio version you listen to, make sure you listen to Simple Man's Comics and Friends, available wherever podcasts are found, in addition to this fantastic video. But we got some great guests with us tonight. We have Wolf Warner from the Wolf Warner YouTube channel, as well as the mighty Mel V. What's going on, guys? Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Yeah! What's up, party people in the place to be? Wolf Warner here. For those who rock with me, y'all know that's my intro, man. Uh, long time, first time to Simple Man's Comics, man. Been my dudes, been rocking for a minute. Mel V, I'm happy to be on a show with my man. I've been rocking with him for a minute. Jack, the Bolo crew, man. I'm just blessed to be here, man. Hope everybody's keeping safe. Word. New York is definitely in the building. <laughs> Mighty Mel V is in the house. Yo, Brian, Bo, thank you so much for, for inviting me on, on, on this joint. Um, Mighty Mel V, I was on a couple podcasts years ago, months ago, 20 hours ago. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm here. I'm, I'm in the big league. Y'all do using Zoom and all that. We're in the big leagues, man. Big leagues. Um, <laughs> um, check this here. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I do want to... Um, do a little giveaway and everything in, 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 in the times that we're going through. I know things is crazy and everything. I, this is my thing, you know, I want to say this is my thank you to to you guys to let me come on the show and, and all the people listening. I, I do want to give away for this Hella Mission 3, uh, first print punchline, first printing, I don't second prints. So um, we're going to do a, I guess, a comment at the end of the show, but at the end of the show, we'll, we'll figure out how we're going to get this book away, but to, to, to anyone on the listeners out there, you definitely going to get this book. Um, and it's their big copy. So I'm nervous for some reason. <laughs> let's, get it, let's get it in. Right. And for those that are just watching this show for the first time, this is podcast. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about four topics. We're going to put those topics up on the screen right now. And we're going to talk about each one for about 10 minutes or so. Then at the end, we're going to get to know a little bit more about our guest panelists. All right. Cool. Well, oh. I'm, ex I'm excited to get into this. Wolf Warner is somebody we've been trying to get on the channel for some time, and Mighty Mel V, I think you guys know uh, from the old Hot and Cold show, was a regular there. So he's a, he's a Simpleman's Comics OG for sure. So this is a perfect panel. As they mentioned, this is the New York episode um, when we were kind of laying out shows that we wanted to do um, in the early stages of the podcast. This was definitely one that we had a big star next to. So Let's get into it, though, fellas. There's a lot going on in comics, even though the comics industry right now is at a standstill. Um, the, obviously, new comics are no longer shipping from Diamond. We've been talking about that. Everybody's been talking about that. But the newest news is there may be a savior in the form of Comics Hub. Now, if you're not familiar with Comics Hub, Comics Hub is essentially a POS, a point of sale system for comic stores that aids in their ordering, um, it aids in their inventory, uh, it aids in their ability to kind of operate their business. Uh, it's, it's a real innovative software tool that a lot of stores have found extremely successful and it operates both in the United States and abroad. And they have a solution that they believe will aid in the current comic industry, I'll say crisis. And what they're looking to do is, within the next couple of weeks, begin selling digital <coughs> comics. Digital comics will be sold at regular cover price. You'll purchase these digital comics. You'll get immediate ownership over these digital comics it, it, within the Comics Hub suite. And then, once this whole process gets to the point where we're in the ability to kind of fulfill orders, you will get a physical copy of said comic. So my question to the panel is, do you feel like this is an alternative that could work? Is this something that we should try to, as a comics community, adopt as our new normal? Or should we just let this thing play out and wait until we can get back to business as usual? <clears throat> well, if I can, I, I would have to say that, believe it or not, anyone comics in Brooklyn, they just sent me an email two days ago signing me up to comics hub so i accepted the email and i've been looking around playing around with it then i called back my lcs and i said so how is this going to work and he kind of broke it down to me i was concerned about whether or not i would have to pay double for the digital and the physical 
He said, not at all. You're going to get your dig digital first, and then we're going to hold the um, physical for you at no extra cost. He said the main problem for him has been, you know, he knows how to drive a car, but he specializes in his car. Comics Hub is a vehicle, but it's not his vehicle. So just messing around with it, he can see it cause some stores, some logistical problems, like huge inventories. But anyone is not that huge. It's like a little smaller store. So Dimitri, the store owner, he is a proponent of Comics Hub and told me that it won't let me down because I'm a fiend. I have to read my books, man. I have to stay current. Uh, the back issue thing is okay with me, you know what I mean? But I like to stay with my current reads. So for a person like me, with a little bit of disposable income, I'm gonna get my digital. And if there's a way that I can still get my floppies later on, I'm gonna do that also. So anyone comics is a retailer that has subscribed to Comics Hub and they link me up. So I'll let you know in the future, for real. No, I can't stand digital. I need to have my physical. And with that being said, I want I will, I will, I will want to wait it out. My main thing is, I like to buy multiple copies of books. Now, does when I when I buy uh, one like if I buy like three digital, do I, am I entitled to to three copies, or how is that going to work? Also, as you know, I am a man of the variants. I am a very mm. king. How is that going to work? Can I order? 25 of, of a digital and get get the, get the incentive how would that work but again i rather i don't I, I do not like reading comics on computer i am a man i like to have the physical book in my hand so in, 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 with, with, with that being said once again i need to see that i need to have that i need i need to let's wait it out man we're we tough man let's let's wait it out that's that's how i feel about it but now with, with comics hub uh they say that you are guaranteed to get your digital Right, I mean, I'm the, sorry, you're physical. You're but, guaranteed to get your physical. But the, the, the thing is, the thing, how that hurts, how that hurts speculation also is, okay, let's say we saw, we all speculated on issue 90, what, 94 of Batman. We, we get that digitally, and it's not what it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want that. I don't want that physical book anymore. Even though mm. I, pay for the, I pay for the digital, I don't want that physical book no more. I want my money back. You know what I mean? How, how, how is that going to work? He told me it's not a double price. You don't pay for digital, and you don't pay you don't pay for the uh, physical. It's gonna be what you pay for the uh, physical three ninety nine. Oh, oh, so that's it. Yeah, that's okay. it. That's okay. it. Okay. That's it. You I don't mean, have to sub. You also don't have to sub to Comics Hub because it's I believe it's free. Yeah. Okay. The app. The app is free. Yeah, so, it's free. Free for the user. Free. Free. Yes. For for, for yeah, for anyone yes. going to the store, stores who want to uh, use the POS function of it, there's a there's like a membership thing. But as far as this aspect of it, it'll be completely free. Mm -hmm. I mean, ho hopefully, we'll put a, I heard a lot of publishers not not wanting to do it. Is that is that what's going on with it now? Stores yeah. are giving pushback too. Yeah, mm. that's what that was. What I was going to say is, um, what's the commitment level so far? Is this, are people in? Is this, um, there was an article on Newsarama that said it was on hold and people were starting to back out of it. Um, and the thing I worry about, especially those smaller stores, if they do start pursuing that and they start signing people up, next thing you know, they're selling copies and then the publishers or whatever pull out of this distribution deal, there's going to be a fiasco there with refunds. Um, you know, it, it's always, you and then you expect some hiccups. It's just, that's just how it's going to be with the new distribution, something like a, quick band-aid fix to try to get uh whether it's digital or not you know books into people's hands and then mal brought up a good point also about the the speculation side of it if all these people are reading the digital first by the time those physicals come out no one's gonna want them like you said if the book is booty and people don't want you know well there's and then the other side of it brian what it there's some this is why i quit i give comics hub credit Right, because they're trying to fix yeah, it's a so problem. Right. Trying. They're trying to do something. Um, and I like Comics Hub as a POS product. I think every store should have it. I, it would just aid in your retail yeah. sales. But and, uh, for it, those that did you say what POS was? Point of sales. Point of sale. I, I, point of sale. Yeah. Um, so, but ultimately, what I think the, there's too many questions. All of the things Mel brought up 
are valid points. And then what you talked about, about a book being booty. But then my other question is, when is the cutoff for the book? So can we order like unlimited comics? Is there a point where a book's no longer available for sale? Or can we just keep ordering digital copies? Because what if I read a copy and boom, something crazy happens. There's a new first appearance. Can I just jump on there and order a thousand? And, and these are all questions that make me leery. But I'll say this. This is an industry where creators are hurting, where stores are hurting. So I don't want to be, as a collector, speculator, investor, reseller, selfish. And my gut for my own benefit would be I'd rather just sit it out. But I think for the industry, if there's an option to get revenue into the hands of the people who need it, that's what we should do. But I really don't have a lot of faith in it. We've even seen like IDW uh, tell the creators of some of their major lines. Yeah, pencils walk. down. Yeah, pencils down. Like, please don't do any more work because we don't want to pay you for it. So, uh, you know, they, they had already solicited two issues beyond what they're shutting them down at. So, it, you know, if if... Publishers like IDW are going to stay, start taking measures like that. Um, I've got to question whether or not this is going to have the momentum that it's going to take to actually be something that we roll out as a, as a big product. And also, could, 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 could we see a situation where the comic book thing work and DC and Marvel sees how much money they're saving by not printing books? But wait a minute. Maybe we should just go to digital only. Yeah, or, or it becomes a print-on-demand system. Where, Disney, yeah. Disney's hurting right now. Disney's hurting. The problem is the entire comics industry doesn't doesn't even move Disney. Like it's not even enough. They could lose that in a year, and it's and it wouldn't make a move for them. But the, but could it? Could, though, Warner Brothers, they they, they were talking about getting rid of the, the comic the comic as a whole anyway. That was a rumor for sure. Right, right, for sure. For sure. But I I, I think that um that that's more of just that's not their business focus, and they'd rather license it out and nobody's ever realized like you could probably make a lot of money if you licensed house characters within your universe. Uh, Marvel saved their company at one point. But yeah. But they, and then they buy everything back now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, um, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely scary times. You know what I mean? Especially for the comic industry. If you're a creator, but continue, continue to create, you know, continue, continue, continue to find work. I mean, it's going to be work out there. <laughs> Put yeah, out maybe I'm maybe I'm missing the the finite details of the the advantage of Comics Hub, but to me I all right put them out digitally. If I want to read digitally, I'll buy it on Comicsology, or if not, I'll wait for the physical release. Yeah, I the beauty of Comics Hub is you get both. You get the yeah. you, get, you get both. You get to read it today, and you're still getting it for your collection. And you don't have to make that choice. Um, right. It it's so it allows the comics industry to continue without, while still maintaining the proper social distancing practices that we were trying to do as really a, a, a world more than a nation. So um, it's a positive thing. It's just, there's so many questions. And the variant question, I haven't heard an answer to that one yet either. That was a great one too. I'll so. tell, tell, tell you one thing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that new Warriors digitally or physically. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll talk about that another time. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> but. That, that leads us to the next topic, though, Mel. You mentioned about Disney hurting. We just saw also recently that Disney, with the theaters being closed, they put some stuff on streaming. But a lot of those movies and those movies that people are anticipating, they've kind of slid their schedule, right? I mean, what they got the movie coming out this year now is Black Widow, which has taken Eternals release date and everything else got pushed back into next year and beyond. Mm -hmm. um, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Um, do, what do you think about the movie industry? What do you think about, are you still anticipated? What do you think about comics result with that delay? Uh, Mel, we'll start with you. Well, um, I think they should keep, because some movies need to be released in a theater. And I think Black Widow, Black Widow looked amazing, by the way. The, the trailers, everything looked good. I think they should just wait, wait it out and see what happens. Um, same, same with Milan, but um, some of their cartoon movies, I think they should they should release for home because you know those are probably for the kids. You got to you got to keep the kids entertained in these rough times. I don't have kids, but I know all my people who do have kids they find finding a hard time trying to keep these kids entertained. So keep the kids' movies digital, but for the movies for I know I know it's going to sound crazy to say, but the movies for all us adults like Black Widow, <laughs> we, we want to see those in the theater or start opening up these these drive-in theaters. 
A lot of driving theaters went under before. Now, with this climate, I think driving driving theaters can excel. If I see a black woman at the driving theater with the with the, the surround sound, everything, I think it, I think it'd be filming. How does it how does it affect comics? I mean, a lot of us already speculated on um, the airbus in the background and New York. And, it's the New York sad, episode. Yeah, that's the sad side of New York. Yeah, sad, sad <laughs> New, New York episode. I don't, I don't want to go check the books. Like a lot of us have uh, speculated on um, some of these Black Widow books, yeah, and a lot of the Eternals books as well. I mean, does, do I think that'll hurt? It'll, it'll hurt temporarily, but now is the time to buy you're these gonna books. Get, you're gonna get some good buying opportunities out of that. <laughs> that now, you know? now is the time I to have. buy these books. I love you know? it. I love, I love it. it. I think this is the this current news of of pushing everything back. I had this conversation with Nico on air and and off air further. Um, I think we have almost reset the clocks. Yeah. It's like we went yeah. back in time and yeah. you get an opportunity. All of the mistakes maybe that you made, all the books you didn't jump on that you've already seen pop. You've already seen Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. I'm gonna make Mel excited. Pop. And now it's dropped back down. You've already seen Eternal stuff pop, and now they've dropped back down. You've Morbius, Morbius, She Hulk, you've Blade. You've already seen these properties get hot. You already know what the potential ROI is, and they hadn't even fully matured yet. But you could make that profit right now based on where the current prices are. So you get this opportunity to reset, and then if you look even more into the future. You can start picking up characters like X Men characters like Gambit, like Rogue, like Jubilee. Um, you're getting you're getting a new opportunity to pick up these characters who had started to price up, who have now started to drop down. So um, you can start being forward thinking. I think we're gonna get six months to a year of like a basically reset in the movie comics speculation market. And if you've been paying attention for the last six months to a year, you should be golden right now. Yep, 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 I agree. Absolutely. And if, if I may, in terms of um, Hollywood and Disney, I have a good friend that, that works on um, boom mics and he's also, uh, his brother's a grip. And, and right now in New York City, Everything is shut down in terms of filming. He gave me the play-by-play -play in regards to the Hollywood. He said, all those movies you've been expecting, looking forward to, it may be a six-month to a year delay. So don't expect, they said, nothing. I mean, right now, he can't even get unemployment. Uh, New York is one of the biggest hubs outside of Hollywood for film crews. Um, and now you have all those dudes unemployed. And unemployment is not even picking up the line right now. So you got grips, mic people. Um, the only people who are getting like uh, safety measured uh, gear is like if you do makeup and wardrobe. And that's only for like the news, like the, the, the news that yeah. comes on. In terms of shows, they are completely shut down. My man that's working on a new Netflix show, I can't really speak on it, he said, but he shut down until May 11th and they just told him to forget about that. And now he can't even get in contact with unemployment. So all the grips in New York City, the film crews, um, the industry brought a lot of money into New York neighborhoods, um, filming. Everywhere you go, you see a block shut off for filming. Uh, we be, we were becoming the epicenter for like different shows and things of that nature. That is shut down right now. You know what I mean? So my man said, don't look forward to no new shows. But like you guys said, that gives people buying opportunities for the, that's into speculating. Cause you know, the Eternals was coming so those prices was getting crazy, but now it's not coming no more. So some of those might drop. So I look at it as an opportunity, you know what I mean? An opportunity to buy. That's how I look at it. But in terms of Marvel and the new shows, my man told me, don't look forward to nothing at all in the next six to 12 months. And well, if you talk about the movie production, I was reading an article today about the movie theaters where AMC, their, uh, what is it, world credit rating just got took a huge hit they're like 5.1 billion dollars in debt and they're saying that it might be might even be possible that amc might not recover from that wow. amc stock amc stocks right now at, at about two dollars and they um they 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 really went from a uh, uh, buy to a um to a, a hold they dropped so they dropped they dropped their rating 
Yeah, like and a I, whole letter, something like that, right? Yeah. So I mean, I, I like so this is no common speculation for me anymore. I've been doing stock speculation, and I'll get to that a little bit later on about some of the I'm working on. But um, it's it's crazy because AFC at one time was 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 was, was a double, well, they, a and they just got stock. bought like a year or two ago, right, by a, a Chinese company or I forget. Um, I know it was someone they bought AMC, and that's also what. Um, uh. And even in within stocks, if there's an opportunity, if if, a, if we can rebound as a society quick enough, if AMC can weather the storm at two dollars, there's a lot of opportunity there. Because AMC is an absolute American staple. But man, this thing—who knows how long this thing is going to last? And then I go both ways. We had this conversation before on this show, where it's like when this whole thing ends. Are people going to immediately want to go out and go to the movies because, like, they've been tired of being cooped up, or are they yes. going to be a little bit nervous about? No, I don't want to get out. I'm too much of an extrovert, man. I want to get no, out. I gotta I go out. Oh yeah, I almost cursed. You can't. You can't even keep people inside the house in New York at this time. You yeah, can imagine yeah, yeah. the next outside yeah, and, and, and the movie is open. It's gonna be crazy. Crazy. So, like, 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 are people gonna want to eat out again? Mm. I don't want to turn this to my stock show, but <laughs> stay tuned for that. I got, a lot of, I, got, I got a lot of good things coming up. Just stay tuned. <laughs> well, guys, both of you guys pay a lot of attention, obviously, to the secondary market, um, but you're also kind of prominent members of the community. So you got – and you, you're OGs, right? You've been here for a while. You've seen a lot happen within the game. So I would like to know what kind of trends – have you seen within the comics? Can it? It can be kind of within comics, the community, the speculation, whatever. What kind of trends do you feel like frustrate you, and you'd love to see change? Ah! <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, wow! Yeah. Who gonna go first? Hey, you, you all. <laughs> <'cause>... <laughs> ah, okay. All right. I'm, I'm, honestly. I gotta walk a fine line with this one right here. <laughs> this question will get you in trouble. Oh yeah, for sure. So, well, as a New York City public school teacher, I have a lot of professional developments on the LBGTQ, so I'm very diversified. I can accept anything, man. I'm down for whatever. I'm a black man, so I can't diss nobody. You see what I'm saying? All right, so let's get that out the way. The trend of forcing sexuality, what you do in the bedroom, kind of forcing it on me, I can go either way on that. I do believe some people, okay, you got your little exposure, but if it seems forced and it seems fake, I can see right through it. I'm not going to throw out new warriors because believe it or not, I was going to buy that. And I was going to read it. I, I, I have a super problem with that book. But I know you yeah. do. <laughs> but I was going to try it <laughs> because how can I say it? Some of those di diverse people are my students. And 15 years from now, they may be looking for representation. And new warriors might be where they need to go. So I'm for each his own. You know what I mean? If Good you part. don't like something, you don't got to buy it. Good you part. see what I'm saying? But, but I do understand that 20 years from now, dudes like us going to be dinosaurs and times change. So they may be an audience for new warriors and safe space and all of these things. Cause I have safe space meetings at school. Okay. I have these meetings at school. I have to deal with these students at school. I have to call a student they, cause they want to be they. You see what I'm saying? So I understand, I do. I got to tell my man, he feels he identifies this way, then he needs to go to that bathroom. Yes, unfortunately, I, I, I look, that's what I'm saying. I have to wear two hats on this one. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? As an educator. Respect that. And, and, and being with the social emotional, with that whole, it's a touchy subject, but it's entering our comic books now. Yeah. And certain ones of us feel that they're effeminizing masculinity. Okay? Yeah. Everywhere we turn. And a lot of black males may feel that way. Okay? But that's a whole nother show. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is where I'm going at the safe space, the trailblazer. They made, uh, I believe, Native American. So you got a lot of people throwing their hats in these social issues, and I think that's a problem, man. Honestly, I'm not saying it doesn't need to exist in comic books because comic books have been political, 
But when it's a forced agenda, my heart feels it, man. I feel when it's forced. That's it for me. I'm off the soapbox. Yo, I I hear where you're coming from, and I and I and I do and I do agree with you. Um, that that forced. One thing, one thing I had got a lot of heat. I got a lot of heat about was um was uh when Falcon when Falcon became um Captain America hit the jackpot. I don't want I don't want to see Black Captain America. He was fine as Falcon. Why does he have to be? I don't want to see characters become different than than, than what they than what they're supposed to be. That goes for white, black, green, purple. I don't want to see. Uh, 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 a, a, a black. I don't want to see a white Black Panther. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to see a black Captain America because Captain America is not black. However, let me be the. That's why I'm glad they, they they call the show Winter Soldier and Falcon, and not Winter Soldier and Captain America. Let him be back. cool. Let him be. Let him be the best Falcon he could be. He was great. He was great. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to see Chinese Bruce Wayne, Asian Bruce Wayne. I don't want to see that. Why? Create create new characters. That, but also, they also go into the new worlds. If you do create new characters, make them good. Devil, Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, perfect. She was dope. No doubt. I messed with her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm cool with her. You know what I mean? Listen. <laughs> I rocks with her. I, that's where I look for. I rock with her, you know what I mean? And I've been rocking with her. Even though people, even though a lot of people didn't, didn't like her at first, they grew to love her because she was new, she was fresh, she was exciting. Yep. It's a, it's no a different character. You, ain't, you, you, you don't have to put color in every character, dude. That, that, that don't make no, it, don't, it doesn't make sense. Don't kill the mythology of what we grew up on. You know what I mean? Like I like said, so, so, um, Alfred is going to be gay in this new Batman book. Um, uh, uh, Batman is Chinese or something like that, or Asian or something. Listen, you can create those characters and call them something else. Why? Why? Why do it? Why not do that? Why not do that? That's the only. That that is that is one of the problems I have. Go, go for a forced a forced diversity. And you hit it right in the head, Wolf. Forced diversity is not. It's not a good thing. I'm sorry, it's coming from a black man. No doubt. <laughs> Straight we up, we don't want to see it. Nah. No, and when it's and when it works, and when it's done and it's done um, organically, it certainly works, and it is, is important because representation matters for everybody who wants to see themselves yes. represented um, in any medium that they really love. So, yeah. you know, for anyone out there saying that these guys are saying that they they're not supportive of that, that's not what they're saying. They're saying nah. that when you do something like you have kind of like this new warriors thing, where it feels at least to us on the outside like. You, you know, it's being marketed. Anything that feels marketed doesn't feel organic and authentic. Nope. And I think that's more to do with it. Brian, sure. what, what about you? What about you? What, uh, you know, another t 10 year plus vet, what, what, what for you at this point gets you worked up? Well, before I get into mine, I do kind of want to touch on what they said. It's <laughs> punchline. <laughs> well, we're going to get there in a minute, but I agree with, with both of what Mel and Wolf were talking about. And then while I'll say New Warriors, I wouldn't buy it because I don't feel I'm the demographic that's being marketed to. I'd rather see something like that where they create new characters right out the bat that way than kind of goes along with what Mel was saying also where they were forcing that, multi, you know, that diversity by changing existing characters and changing traits and changing, you know, to, to please the masses that want to say, hey, I want to see um, a gay Bruce Wayne, just for an example, not that it happened. And then right. next thing you know, they get a petition started, they get these 400 signatures, and now you have an Elseworlds story or whatever it is with the gay Bruce Wayne. I'd rather mm -hmm. see it with new characters from the jump dealing with that diversity and creating and marketing towards the people that want those characters than changing years of that character that we've all grown to, to love and know. I think there's something for everybody in comics. We just got to find out what that is and, and not change what already is there. Right. Um, I, I do agree characters need to evolve and grow, but stay within the, you know, the concept of what's stay in your lane. Oh, oh, also, to, to, let, me, let me touch the new world once again. If those characters had dope-ass powers, 
Then I'm with it. <laughs> this person is pulling out portals out of a book bag. <laughs> book bag. What? <laughs> My man had a pink force field. What the? <laughs> boy, you got Are you glad I can't curse him, boy? Because <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah. who pulled out a pink force field? Nah, man, nah, nah, dude, nah, nah. And hey, you see how uh, crazy this is? I just spoke about it, <laughs> and we were criticizing it, but like I said, remember, Wolf is going to treat it. I'm going to read issue one. I, I will, too. I mean, I'm not going to lie about that. I'm going to read what, issue one. What was it? The, 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 the little Morbius. He was probably the, the illest character that I, would, that I would, like, spec on, but only because he has nothing to do with color. Think about it. He has nothing to do with color. He was no, it was no diversity, no nothing, no crazy. Yo, he's a little Morpheus, dude. What one of those dudes like he, he could patch it to the internet? Uh, that, made uh, me, that made me sweet. Yeah. <laughs> internet gas turned him into some screen. In, 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 internet gas. <laughs> right. <laughs> internet gas. Right. I but now it's part. I thought of a podcast before. Is that internet gas? <laughs> <laughs> internet gas wow but now okay. i'll say that the, the, the comic trend that kind of frustr me, frustrates me and wolf kind of touched on it but i'll say this is almost a personal pet peeve but i also think this is something that's good for comics as well as we're seeing the rapid ascension and popularity and monetary value of new characters that we don't know much about yet um i think the ease of information right now where people you know that we've talked about getting alerts and stuff and people time. are letting them know hey this is a character this is the first appearance it's gonna be a huge character and the next thing you know the the demand for it drives up the price drives up and we don't know much about the character at all but i think this is also a good thing because we all start somewhere i can personally say years ago i was probably in the same group where if i heard something i went out and bought it i didn't give a damn and then sure enough that character drops and I get left holding whatever in my hand, but that's kind of what the learning experience is with comics. I don't blame any app. I don't blame any news source. I don't blame anything because it's like, Jack, you and I talk about it. It's like blaming McDonald's for being fat, right? <laughs> you know, they put the information, it's up to you to whether to learn <laughs> to use it or not use it, but however you use it, you're gonna learn something from it, whether you make a lot of money or you get left holding the bag on it. Oh, I, gotta go to bed. I, gotta I think go to bed. that's also important for you within your comic journey. That's, but I say pet peeve, frustrating, but I think there's good that comes out of that also. All right, so I'll tell you guys, for the thing that frustrates me the most, I have to kind of turn the mirror from the industry kind of onto ourselves as the comic community. Um, I think that I get the most frustrated from what we do to ourselves. It's comics politics. I talk about it all the time on the channel. It can be applied so many different ways. If you're a speculator, it comes in the form of speculation, clans, gangs, cliques, communities, whatever you want to call it. From your CBSI to facts to trends, you can't be in two. You can only be in one. If you like one, you have to hate the others. You can't share information, which makes everybody short on information um, <laughs> when we should be all working together. Um, and then beyond that, when you, when you start expanding. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, good. It's a New York episode. Yep. And then, it's an NY episode, yeah. Yeah. And then once you expand beyond just the speculative community and you start looking at the community in a whole, um, look at things like any topic you want to talk about. You mentioned an app, like look at the key collector app. If you bring that app up, look at the way that the community is going to divide in how they view it. Um, some will view it as this excellent tool um, that helps so many people. Some will view it as this like evil thing because they've got to find something to point the finger at. And there's a lot of that finger pointing and, and this is the blame. Now there's too many variants. Now these stores are creating store exclusives. They're to blame. Now it's these YouTubers pumping indie comics. They're to the blame. It's always something to blame. Um, we saw it with, uh, with, the, the final order cutoff show. We were going to tank the market. Everything was going to go downhill. Nobody was going to make any money. And guess what? Nothing happened. The it, final order cutoff show caused Corona. It, yeah, it caused Corona. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> you know, but that's the thing is I, I wish, I know I sound, I almost sound like the corny hippie, like can't we all just get along on some kumbaya type shit, but it's really- we, we, no, 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 we should all- We should. To get along. Yeah. We should. We, we, all, we, all, we all have a, a common thing that we all love, but people, people are protective of what some, all right, for some speculators- this is all they got. Mm -hmm. This is why if this market takes, they're screwed. And it even goes beyond speculators <laughs> into every aspect of YouTube. Brian and I went to a convention and we were working with another YouTuber. And we ended up finding out that another YouTuber had sent text messages telling them not to work with us. Then I went and did, you mentioned the Nico show. So I go do the show with Nico. There was a history with me and Nico's partner, but he was super cool about it. But apparently some other people had issue with Brian and I being on that show. And it's always some politics and opinions from different members of the community when at the end of the day, we're all really trying to do the same thing. And we're tripping over each other because there's so much like work and collaborative effort that can be done. This show is an example of that. This is a show that we came up with to try to show different voices, different opinions, different people on YouTube that Brian and I like and respect. And there's, it, there's not a need for ego. Uh, we hope you guys get over. We hope that some people who are watching us decide to go watch you guys. That's the whole point. So I wish that people would collaborate and work together more. And I'm excited when I do see that happen. It's not like it never happens. Um, and a, a prime example of that is what the Comic Core has going on with the mainframe Comic Con, the online digital Comic Con. Um, yeah, I know see that. It's, it's, it, explain that. I've seen that. Yeah, the, the, it's a, a group of retailers have gotten together to try to put on a digital comic convention. They have have a bunch of A-list names right now from Kevin Smith to Boss Logic. Um, a lot of people that like we can't talk about that are in talks to get involved in it, some big, big names. And it's going to have a bunch of creators. There's going to be live drawing auctions. That's it's going to feel like you're at a That's comic dope. con. You're going to be able to walk down an artist alley. You're going to be able to walk down panel rooms. And you're going to get a bunch of like guest hosts hosting various different events from different YouTube channels that you're familiar with, including two handsome gentlemen from Simple Men's Comics. <laughs> can you, now can you use like a scratch stiff smell and it'll smell like a comic con? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, everybody, it's funny, everybody's made that joke. This, this <laughs> no, I I was original shit. <laughs> nah, you can't, you, before, before we do this, you can't shower for a week so that everybody's smelling the fuck your, in their own room. Let your beard grow, show your ass right. crack. I'm already doing that, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> get drunk the night before she just sweat out alcohol. <laughs> right, right. No, but I, got, I, got, I, got, I got to get a shot to her. She cut my hair. Oh, your joint is clean, brother. Clean, mm -hmm. brother. It's that shine. I look like go club. You and Brian, Brian kind of clean too, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm roughing it, man. Oh. Brooklyn style. But yo, you definitely brought up, you definitely brought up a good point. Um, I don't want. I don't want to get into that. The whole thing, you know. what I mean, I did try to bring peace at one point, and it just didn't work. People, people. Well, didn't work. I think that's a prime example. I think that's. <laughs> a, I think that's a prime. I think that's a prime example. Work. You can't. Yeah, there's people within the community, no matter how much you. you that's why you can't try to ever unite everything. All you I can try. do. All you can do is find people who view it the way that you view it and try to work together to make the positive voices louder than the negative I, I got more hate trying to bring peace than me just keeping my damn mouth shut. And it's uh, and like, I, like I said before, if, if in this climate, if you are still hating on people in this climate, there's something wrong with you. Because we, at, at, at this point, more than ever, we all need to come together and, and just, just be cool, man. Just be cool, because you never know, man. You never know that person you the person you you was cool with two weeks ago could be gone in two weeks, and you'll be sitting there like, "Well, damn." You know so, what I mean? So just be cool with everybody, man. It it don't take nothing to be nice to people. You know? You know what I mean? Like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Like, so talking, you know, you bring up a good point, Mel, and then also kind of piggybacking off of uh, what what Jack's frustration was, given the climate and given everything we just discussed, as YouTube creators. What type of content do you think the community could use right now? Like if you were going to, hey, I'm going to start making some videos or I want to do something. What kind of content would you create 
Um, it could be anything, whether it's comic related or, you know, kind of relating to LCS is helping. There's a whole type of bunch of anything. If you were to say, hey, I'm going to make a video, what do you think the community would want to watch right now? Who, 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 who do you want to go first? Well, I, I, since I'm an ultimate consumer, I don't know if y'all know my videos. I cop like 30 books a week, honestly. And I think people still want to know what would have came out. So I've been putting out like a little no new comic book day for each week, regardless if the books is coming out. Because if anything, it keeps it. I can go back in one of my videos and see what came out. Smart. So it gives me a little running inventory Smart. for when it does come out. Like, oh, I need to get that. So I think people you're still pre -order. people still still need to do the pre order videos. Like, let's not quit on those because some people Word. would turn to us to see what is coming out. So I would still do preview videos. I think people still want to see that. And I think people would want to see reviews of hot back issues that kind of tie in to what's going on. For example, example, yo, I've been rocking Deadly Genesis, right? The whole run, back issues, because of the whole Vulcan return in the Hickman x <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So next thing you know, that leads you down to the the Ed Brisson rise and fall of the Shi'ar empire because that can tie in with this whole Al Ewan empire. You see what I'm saying? So I'm like doing back issues that leads me up to current that, titles. I don't know if that makes sense. That's, that, that's pro work right there. That was a, that's pro work <laughs> in comic speculation. <laughs> that's <laughs> knowing how to read. That's, that's reading the books. That's kind of working it together, connecting the dots. I, I absolutely love that. I my man. That is not paint by numbers right there. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, what, 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 what I'm going to start doing, which I alluded to earlier, um, I am now getting in, in, into, into the stock game, so I'm, I'm going to start doing a new channel called um, A Comic Speculator Speculates on Stock. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put, put a list out of the stocks I'm speculating on each month. We, we, we will revisit them a month later to see how I did. Once again, speculation and stock, comic speculation and stocks are so similar. It's insane. Now I, now I know why people say, yo, you pump and dump it. Why they use the term pump and dump and how people pump and dump stocks. You know what I mean? It, it, it's for, it's for example, this stock called INO. They were supposed to be um, one of the leading people uh, for, for coronavirus cure. So I speculated on that stock, bought a couple of shares. Um, this one dude came out and hated on the stock, dropped the stock down. And they, they do that shit, the same shit they do in comics. They, 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 they downplay a book, the stock comes down, uh, the, the, book of the, the stock of the book comes down, same thing with this stock, it came down, but it survived the hater wave. And now the stock had just got approved for FDA approval, it stock kind of going back up. It's surviving a hater wave. Now the stock is at nine, ten dollars, no, eight, nine dollars stock right now. So it's very similar. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a um, a, a channel, and it might still my fucking not, not my idea. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> it might still my idea because it's I called a, com a comic speculator speculates on stocks. I'm gonna have a lot, of, and it's also gonna teach a lot of people how to manage their money. Um, I raised my credit score from a, a dismal five twenty. And just today, I reached 700, so I'm very proud of myself. And I did that by by, learn, by learning the game, learning the market. That's what being on quarantine and not, well, no, because if you're on quarantine, you can actually spend a lot more and ruin that credit, to be honest. No, 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 no. But you know, as long as if you, if you have the money, don't buy nothing you can't afford. Yep. Pay, 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 your credit, pay your credit cards before the due date, pay it on the statement closing date. That's another tip I'm going to be, be giving people over on my channel. but. I said, and see, I said, people, you know, nobody, they don't have nobody to teach us financial stuff. So we have to learn for ourselves. And this is another reason why I want to do that other channel to teach people this, this, this stuff more as I'm learning it and as I'm gaining knowledge. I'm going to I hope knowledge you're going to wear a people. monocle and a top hat. <laughs> I'll probably wear a suit. I, I, love <laughs> it, I, love it. I love it. And for anyone out there who heard him use the term hater way, and maybe confused <laughs> Mel coined this term and it really it just perfectly articulates um, what happens within the cycle of a popular book and it, it, it's it's speaking to the point where after a book spikes 
and you start to have those people who come out and start downplaying a book in an effort to either because they didn't get it or because they have it or they want to buy more into it, but they're trying to drop that price. Um, and that is that area where there's just nothing but negative news about a book um, during that. And if a book can survive that, as Mel said, if it can get to the it, yeah, then a book can go forever. A prime example is Punchline. Punchline <laughs> Yes. Punch Brian line. and I didn't like that. I'm not hate away, man. I just I always say I I don't buy it. No, but you are, and I am too. In an example of we didn't we didn't force. We're sitting there looking at this book like how does how is this worth what it's being paid for right off the bat? Now we'll say buy what you like. We respect your opinions, but for us personally, the value seemed inflated. I'm shocked. We're talking weeks and weeks later, and these prices are really like solid. Yeah, and copies are still selling. So not only is the price holding, but you're still seeing demand hold. So it's that's really amazing. I mean, um, you 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 guys congratulations. You guys on, on ten thousand subscribers. You guys survived the headway. <laughs> yeah, no, you that's it. Hey, you know I'll tell you what? We're actually still in it. <laughs> but, nah, nah, but, nah, but, now with ten thousand subscribers, you, you guys won that. <laughs> not yet. Not like we were. It was that was certain. That but um, I think. It, now that you kind of segued into our thing, um, you know, for us, when this whole thing happened, Brian, that was a conversation Brian and I had, which was why we wanted to ask you guys. Um, and I think both of you guys gave great examples um, because it was a real problem that we had to come up with. Not only did we have to figure out how do we fulfill content in our channel so we can keep our schedule as it is, but also like, I don't want to ever overblow our importance. But I also know like people are bored, they're stir crazy, they are depressed, they're stressed, they need relief. And for some people, um, watching comic book content, watching our shows gives them that form of entertainment. And I feel an obligation to those who do count on us for content to be able to try to lighten the load and, and for whenever we can make content that they enjoy. So I took very seriously the, the task of us trying to create some new shows that we debuted on the channel. We want to continue to do that kind of stuff. We're really thinking about that. So that's why we, we transitioned some of the shows into talking about back issues like Wolf mentioned, because like that's kind of where you've got to, right? You've got to start looking at the down part of the back issue market um, and, and we're forced to without, without these weekly comics. But then we also started talking more about trade paperbacks, an area that I feel like the YouTube comic community largely ignores because it's not sexy. It doesn't move the needle on a week to week basis. Show ain't sexy. Uh, that show isn't. Right. I don't do. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, 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 watch, I usually watch a lot of YouTube. I did watch that, but I'm sorry. Yeah, that doesn't, that's <laughs> not going to get, that's not going to get people hyped, but but it, I hope that people get an opportunity to read something, it, 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 see something that they wouldn't have checked out previously, um, reading comic books during this time. I always say has two benefits. Number one, uh, the obvious benefits of reading, uh, of just the enjoyment of it. But number two, what you saw when Wolf was breaking down Deadly Genesis and how it all plays into everything, that's you only get that through reading the best investors i know all have one thing in common they read they read of comics <clears throat> you know whether whether and, and and whether it's and i don't care who you who you like whether it's your jim's comics or within the circle that we've spent time around gary nusser or gary nusser or nico gary real Gary Nusser is, I call him the factor, and it was an honor to have him when I was doing Drug and Chat. It was an honor to have that brother on that show. Dude, his new show, his new show with Nico, his morning show, Comics uh, and Coffee, is. I just saw the premiere episode yesterday. It was very good. Good. Was very, very, yeah, would, very good, very informative. I want to see him excel. Uh, it's, it's, it's another brother that I don't talk a lot about, Um, and that's Lucas Ficina. Yeah. Another. He... He was the originator of Break It Down, uh, uh, FOC list. He, you know, he used to go for four or five hours to bring it down. FOC. He used to go through the whole, the whole book. And the and, Comic Crusaders, they just did a uh, like a virtual con sort of deal where they did a lot of big interviews. So Brian and I have talked about this. This I We've been reading not just current trades, but like Brian has talked about 
about going back and Max. You're talking, and it's funny when you go back and you read like older stuff, you'll see something and be like, man, I could see this happening in a movie. I could see this going with the current comic. You just pick up so much stuff. So even if your mentality was, I'm in this, I don't care when these guys talk about trade paperbacks, you're boring me. I just want to hear what's hot. <laughs> that to that, that community, I say, there's a lot to be benefited from the reading. For example, I just copped this right here. The runs, the other misses, the runs. It's Dark Rain, baby. Dark Rain, Young Avengers, man. Once again, I said, wait a minute, because I'm just going back. I just got back in the game 2016, honestly. And this dude's like y'all, man. Unpressable defects, your podcast. Appreciate it. Uh, Brian Appreciate it. been doing his videos forever. It's dudes like y'all that got me back into the game, man. You see what I'm saying? In terms of, but just reading. I'm no big flipping, things yeah. like that, but I do know if you read, it will lead you to the spec. You see what I'm saying? It will lead you to past spec, where you don't need to look at websites because you up on it because you're doing yeah. the reading. You see what I'm saying? So Dark Rain right here, man, listen. I said, hold on, Hulkling's coming back with the Wiccan. You know it's all about diversity. We're going to see Hulkling and Wiccan at some point. All right, kissing each other in the mouth. Okay, we he have gonna, to. Okay, he, you're going to see He going to f*** somebody in the booty. But you know what I'm saying? It's a New York City edition, y'all. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? But things like Dark Rain, you know, old things like, let me get a new Mutants number one while the movie's on hold. You know I what I'm saying? That. I love that. You see Absolutely. What I'm saying? Hold on, Monica Rambo. You see what I'm yes. saying? While everything's on hold. You know what I mean? Look, yo, that, that, that Monica Rambo. What, 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 I remember that book was a four dollar book. That's about a fifteen dollar book now, correct? Yeah, it's about yeah, yeah. Buy the fifteen. Just like stuff. Buy, buy the fifteen. Ride the way till it goes to forty. Mm -hmm. Come on, my Monica Rambo, out your out your mind. And you have that information right now. You already know what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's cheating. We already know what yeah. this book can go for. And we and we have it right now. It's like Biff, we're, we're, we went back in time. <laughs> we got the sports almanac. It's time to make those moves. It's that uh, uh, again, easy. Uh, 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 allow the ball to, 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 to break down the ways for the people. So you have an initial book, right? The initial book drops. And now, 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 now for, for those who don't know, this is called, T-Town, the theory of Mel. Shout out to my man Dino, by the way. Flip side. So, listen, you, the, the initial book drops, right? There's a, the first wave is the undercutter wave. Because that book is going to get undercut to hell. Immediately. If it survives that wave, right? It comes, it comes about the water. Uh, look at hurt, look at beat up. You don't come to the to, to, to that wild wave we talked about, the hater wave. Oh, ah, that book ain't that book ain't crap. Ah, who cares about who cares about this character? Yeah, they ain't gonna last. That book is beat down to the ground again. That book rises above that. If you defeat that hater wave, that 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 number two wave, because you can survive, you can survive undercut a wave. But if you, if you beat that hater wave, you gonna come out looking like a, looking like a phoenix, looking like a falcon. You know what I mean? And then you're gonna see you're gonna sit pretty for a while. Then you're gonna have your movie wave. No, no, before the movie wave, it's the what have you done for me lately wave. Because in our current market, a book only lasts for about a week, and then nobody cares about it. You get, that's, that's that that's that Janet Jackson wave I'll call. Then you survive that, you brush that off, because you already brushed off hater wave. That 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 Janet Jackson wave is nothing now. Then you got your you gonna see you got your sit pretty wave. We 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 uh, um the price is gonna start going up a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Then you're gonna have that movie wave. That's where you shine like a falcon. Boom! Shoot that shoot right up. That shoot right up. Then you you sitting pretty with your movie wave. You're gonna go start going back down a little bit. You're gonna start going back down a little bit. And then the movie drops. Boom! Right there. That's how you know your book. So if you, your book will survive if you survive under cut wave. And if you survive hate wave, all those new waves are just bonuses, B. That's the tea time. That's the theory of now. I'm telling you, look at any book, it happens like that. I'm telling you. I love that. I love, I've, I've always felt, I've always felt since I first heard you explain that, I've always felt that that is true. It doesn't matter how many times you've seen a book get hot. Um, that is a, a true it, representation 
New York style. Of, New York style. Of, of, and why style? Right, of how <laughs> the cycle of a book. So what, again, what Mel's saying is if you're trying to sell, there's moments within that cycle to get out where you're good. If you, as once you get past those first couple waves where you could get hurt, now you're in, in, in the gravy. So no matter when you sell from that point out, you know, you're playing with plus money at that point. No I mean, so, so, some, books don't, some, some books don't survive hate away. No, the majority. Power, 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 power Rangers 40. Oh, man, that book got, whew, <laughs> that book got cream, pummeled. It didn't survive, didn't make it. Came back, doctor said, didn't make it. <laughs> bang, ba- bang. Oh, didn't make it. As my man in the stock market tells me, you buy the rumor and sell the news, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That. Yes, sir. It, it, it goes back. It goes back. Look what I'm getting now. A force. Easy money. So, uh, the variant. The Kid Loki. Hands. Easy money. Kid Loki. Right now. Easy go, money. Go, 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 go back to the A force. I'm going to give you one better. I'm going to give you one okay. better. Five. Adult female artists mm-hmm. like Stephanie Hines. There's mm-hmm. a blank var- there's a blank variant for that. Trust wow. me. Bang it, bang it. Okay. And, 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 and there's also a, a, um, the first appearance of uh, what was the uh, uh, sing- singularity. Boom. Singularity. Singularity. You, you can find that book for twelve dollars, my man. Trust me. Cop it. I'm on Trust it, baby. Put me on. Put me on, baby. Now, if I, if I, if I have my if I have my East elevation right here, yeah. Bro, everybody, everybody was talking about um, um, what's the character from um, Kane number one? Oh, uh, Sabine Wren. Oh, Sabine. Cool. Oh, yeah. She cool. She she wielded the dark saber and all that. That's fine. But Boba Fett had a daughter. She know that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. T- I've t- seen. T- go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. T- tells of Boba Fett, first parents. Try to find, try to find number two for for cheap. We got a stormtrooper sitting on a um a wampa. I think that's the name of the creature. You ain't gonna be able to find that book. Remember, I told y'all y'all was gonna be able to find that um uh Miss Marvel um the, the Samsung for. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> yes, I remember that. Come on, find that book, please. That's why we miss you, Mel. See. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I'm not good at this, man. I'm not good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not good at this, dude. So we've talked about four fantastic topics. I, I want to thank you guys. I love – we've been trying to get both of you on this sh- show. This is like the perfect format. We're glad to have you guys. Especially, Mal, <clears throat> you and I have done live streams together. You were on the hot and cold. Woof, I'm glad we were finally able to get you on. Yes, um, we've exactly. We've been trying for a while. And this was like the perfect segue to it. So now let's take that time and let you guys tell us what you guys have going on. And then also, Mel, we're going to start with you because I think you have that giveaway to announce too, right? Yes, I do have a giveaway. Uh, I am giving away a Hell of Risen 3. Um, I guess the best the best comment gets it. Is, is, is that what you want to do, Brian, Bo? Just have them, yeah. Um, how about this? Um, we talked about that frustrating trend in comics, right? So comment down below, what frustrates you the most within the comic and the comic community right now? Comment on that. We'll pick one at random. And then two weeks from now on the next edition of the podcast, we will announce the winner at the beginning of the show. And I will, and I will ship that book out immediately. You know, my eBay rating for shipping is about 40% late, but I will get you guys <laughs> that book <laughs> immediately. Um, also, um, I don't do a lot of podcasts anymore, but um, a lot of people want to see the drunken chat come back. I don't think it's going to come back, but I just, 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 just log to my channel and I just do random videos at any given day. You know what I mean? Um, it's a uh, mighty Mel V. Um, always show love and support to anybody who comes to my channel. And um, if drop your link, I'll definitely shout you. I do want to shout out. My- well, Richard Sportster did that. I don't know if you can hear me, but shout out to him. Um, hold on a second. Yeah, go to go to the next person. Hello? Right, Wolf, what do you got going on? Where can people find you? Oh, uh, well, if you can't find me at Wolf Warner Channel, man, nothing major, man. For some people, I took my channel, I started it as a challenge from my middle school students. 
And uh, it's just been going ever since, man. Um, I'm about to reach 500 subscribers, and I'm going to do my little giveaway in regards to Marvel Voices. Ooh. I have all three copies signed by, like, 18 people that came for the uh, launch party for Marvel's Voices. And for people who don't know, there is the uh, cameo appearance of the Children of the Atom in here. And there's also the uh, first appearance of the goddess spider, the spider who bit Peter Parker. I don't know if people know, but that was snuck up in these Marvel voices. So when I hit, um, I'm gonna do my giveaway for the 500. And that's basically it, man. I do hauls on Wednesdays. I do reviews on, and I'm gonna start to do like my old back issues, Dark Reign, Young Avengers, um, you know, Rise and Fall of the Shi'i Empire. Uh, East of West, Volume 1 and 2. Just going to start doing more and more reviews. So I'm a young channel, man, doing what I do, minding my business, man. But um, I appreciate you guys having me on. Like I said, long time, first time. And uh, thumbs hey. up this video, y'all. These dudes that's here are real. Please thumbs up and subscribe to everybody that's on this video, man. Hey, real hey, dude. Can, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, you heard me before? Yeah, we want you to take the sketch. Can you t is it a magnet? Can you take it yeah, off and show I'm us? I'm taking it off. Hold on. Also, while he's doing that, we'll put the description and the link to your channel in the in the description of this video, as well as the card up above right now, so people can check out Wolf Warner's channel. So, 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 big shout out to my man Retro Sports Nerd. He definitely came through in the clutch, and I didn't even know the sketch was in the cloud. I opened my mail to like four weeks later, and I said, "Oh, dope sketch, dope Batman sketch." So, Retro Sports Nerd, he's definitely um doing his thing, trying to trying to trying to get his um his art popping, and he served his country well. So. There's a big shout out to him. Um, shout out to Gary, Gary Nuss's channel. Uh, shout out to uh, Nico Tom. Um, shout out to everybody. Just, 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 um, just do what you're creating. And if, and if you hate, take that hate, turn it to creativity, and do do what we do. Come on in. Come, 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 join us. You know what I mean? Come be a part of this beautiful comic book speculation or comic book community by podcasting. Don't hate. Usually, usually, turn that negative energy into a positive one. You know what I mean? And come out with something. Yeah, that's one thing I also say is if if you're watching this or if you watch any videos, if you watch any YouTube channel and you have the desire to start a channel yourself but are kind of nervous about it, don't be nervous. Everyone starts somewhere. You, all you need nowadays is a cell phone. I that's mean, it. You sit there, film it, do what you want to do because there might be all these YouTube channels out there, but there's only one of you. And if you start creating today. I'm telling you, do what you have the passion for. That's kind of what we like to do. We like to talk about the stuff that we like to talk about. And we have great people like Wolf and Mel on. But either way, don't be scared to start a YouTube channel. Everyone's got to start somewhere. And the first video, I'm going to tell you right now, the first video is going to be your worst one. But then you just keep doing them. And then I'm on like video 400 something and it's still the worst <laughs> one. But we're going to get better at some point. That's that's what it is. Like Don't, don't, don't. Just, just do something. Don't just hate. Absolutely. Don't just be. Don't, don't just don't be lazy and hate. Just if you if you could do better, come on in and do better. Now, right? I do want to close out. We haven't had a, a lightning round. This isn't really going to be a lightning round, but we are all we all, we talked about it kind of before. We are all wrestling fans as well, right? Yeah. And yeah. then this is filmed on Monday, aired on Tuesday. So this past weekend we had WrestleMania number thirty six. I don't know if you guys saw both nights, if you all saw one out of the other, but with what you saw, let's do this. What was your favorite match? Ladder match. The tag team ladder match. Followed by, uh, cl closely followed by Seth Rollins and um, and uh, Kevin Owens. That was a good one. What's okay, good? being that I am not current, but we're talking about WrestleMania. What was this, 36? Well, let's start with the number three. I can take you back to <laughs> WrestleMania three. <laughs> I want to say that was the Silver Dome, and I want to say that's when Hulk slammed Andre. Andre the Giant, son. I'll say, you hear WrestleMania three, that's what you think of, right? That's what I, I yep. look, I didn't see 36. I stopped watching wrestling a minute ago, but I could take you back to my days of Roddy Riot, Roddy Piper. Yeah. I'm a Roddy Roddy Piper is my all-time favorite wrestler because he was a grimy dude. I'm also a Sergeant Slaughter guy, whipping Bob Backlund when he was doing the step-ups <laughs> on the steps. I'm a Pat Patterson dude. You know what I'm saying? I am a, I'm one of those dudes, uh, Grand Wizard, you know what I mean? Um, way back, Iron Sheik, 83, 82, Pedro Morales, Tito Santana, tag team champions. My favorite all-time is 
Tony Atlas and Dwayne and Rocky Johnson. I'm about, I'm about you know? to say, you, 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 your first half, you picked the most racist people in wrestling. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Roddy Piper? <laughs> oh, no, for some reason, I don't know why I like dudes like that. I like the bad dudes. I don't know. I like the villain. I like M Magnificent Morocco with the Asiatic Spike. You know what I mean? Like, I like the villains growing up, man. I did. I did. I did. I did. So I can't tell you about 36, but I can tell you about three. I do want to give a shout out to my, my father's friend, Mr. Jerome Young, a.k.a. New Jack, who had a great episode of Dark Side of the Ring. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Salute. Oh, Lord. Yes. Now, if we're talking WrestleMania three, then the only match that mattered was <laughs> Savage Steamboat. But... Ah! Moving beyond that into WrestleMania 36, I would say that for me, the Boneyard match wins all. Uh, Why? The Boneyard match wins all because, because I am somebody, no matter what arena we're talking about, that is all about innovation. Wrestling is supposed to suspend your disbelief. When I'm watching wrestling, people have always asked me, how can you watch this crap? It's guys fake fighting, blah, 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 blah. For me, it's the same as watching game of thrones or any other show like that i'm watching two characters and when i watched the boneyard match i believed alan jones jr the greatest technical wrestler in the game today i was gonna say i don't think that match would work without someone like him no longer respected mark calloway formerly known as the undertaker and undertaker had to go get his respect back and it was so beautifully shot if it was if it was cheaply produced it wouldn't have worked but the way that it was, it just worked so, 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 so well. It illustrated that character perfectly. I liked the Bray Wyatt match less, but I think that it also properly illustrated that character. And I think that in this environment that we're in where you can't gather people in rooms, these kind of cinematic wrestling matches can do two things. Number one, they can allow us to have wrestling in this climate. Number two, I think that you got to look at the real positives. There are some older wrestlers yep, like yep. Sting, Mankind, who could who who can't wrestle anymore, but they could have these types of matches because they're already doing it on movie sets. Mm -hmm. They're already doing movies where they're getting into these fights. I mean, I I mentioned it when we were off air, like a Stone Cold Steve Austin bar fight. Uh, these kinds of things could be really fun and exciting. Yeah, definitely for the younger talent, it uh, it pauses the game. Yeah. But but I'll give that up for Sting Undertaker. Just one time. <laughs> so let me ask, I know you guys are wrestling guys. Do they still have like like Piper's corner when he cracks Jimmy Snooker over the head with the coconut? Do they still do side entertaining things like that still? They do, but the thing that I don't like about it is they don't invest in the sets that they used to right, have. It's in the day. ring now. It's in the ring. So oh, it looks they used to have the sets. Yes. Yes. So it looks fake. They still do it like the Miz has his show. Uh, okay. You know, there's guys who have their own little like shows, but it, it's not the same as it used to be. Like you're not getting that barbershop moment. They don't attack each other in the hallway while they're interviewing anymore. They do that. They do that. Okay. There's, still, there's still some of that. There's still, okay. there's still that kind of thing. But, I, I think they need to go back to some of that. There's talk that WWE shipped every wrestler on the roster a green screen so that they mm. can go start shooting promos in their house and project <laughs> their logos on the back 80s mm -hmm. style. I think that's going to be cool. Wrestlers I love that. promos like the 80s. Yes, I yes. Think that, I think that's – I think that's – that to me, that's like – look at what's happening in hip-hop with, with, with guys getting on, doing battles on Instagram right. Live. It, yes. It, it kind of opens the door for people – like where we would used to be kind of like too prideful to take that risk it's kind of like well fuck it we're in a situation where let's just let it all hang out let it all out yep yep absolutely uh, but uh, but again i said i, I didn't hear i didn't hear response your response was about younger talent but the longevity i i met another man kind of bullet perfect sting versus undertaker perfect mm. let me get that 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 would that would provide yeah. us that would that would provide us some I'll, I'll probably say my favorite match, which when it was starting, like the first fifteen minutes of it, I didn't really like it, but I actually did like the 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 Randy Orton freaking Oh match. yeah. You know, the the last man standing match. Minus I saw that there was a whole bunch of people that weren't too happy with um 
<laughs> Orton like hanging edge with gym equipment because it was too close to the hole. <laughs> Been wall. Mm. But uh, I, the first 15 minutes of it, I was like, man, this 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 match isn't that great. But as it went on and went on, I started liking it more. There was a lot of great matches. I, um, there's one match that I won't say I really liked the match, but my favorite wrestler, of course, we will say <laughs> Braun Strowman. Oh my God. <laughs> Taking out Goldberg, I was happy that he got the belt. But the match was, the match just like the main event was like, what Lesnar came in four F fives, Braun Strowman four power slams, wins the belt. Yeah. But I, I, giving, going from Raymond James Stadium to what they put on, I, I think it was a decent WrestleMania. But do you do you want to do you want this to be continue the product or just put the product on hold for a little while? Same with comics. Uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to get forced to put it on hold, but Monday Night Raw is the longest rate, longest running episodic TV show in the history of television. So if they miss a week, they they end that streak, and I don't think they want to end that streak to save their life. But I also think in these times, like it is important that we have some form of entertainment. So I do think that these wrestlers are providing that, um, but their health has to come first. So I respect the wrestlers who said, like like Roman Reigns, who has a newborn in his house, who has an elderly family member in his house, and who's a cancer survivor, who said, I'm not taking the risk, I'm staying home. Or Daniel Bryan, who immediately after the match felt a bit uncomfortable and decided to quarantine himself for a few weeks. Wow. With his family, um, because he felt like he was around so many people with that taping. I have to respect those guys, too, for doing – what they're doing um, for their families. Absolutely. We, and you know what? Uh, uh, go ahead. Let me go and close this out so we, and then we can talk. Okay, <laughs> real really? quick. Before, one more wrestling note. Okay. Mad Cave Studios, Over the Ropes. Ooh. Yeah. Great book. Excellent read. The best, I've said this, There's. I love wrestling comic books. That is a wrestling comic book that is clearly yes. written by a diehard wrestling fan who yes. understands the game on both sides from in ring to the business. Yes. Um, it is it is thoroughly, thoroughly entertaining. Yes, it is. That's that was it for a, more. <laughs> there was another wrestling book, but we could we could talk about that off air, but <clears throat> I do before before we leave, I want to thank you guys. I want to congratulate you guys for, for reaching that ten thousand goal that you that you wanted oh, so bad, and you, you guys keep doing your thing, man. Um, just just keep grinding, dude. Keep providing entertainment for us as listeners, as fans. I want to say thank you to you guys. Well, we want to thank you guys because yeah. the community is what makes it. We have a ten thousand member community is the way we see it, yeah. and it's the community that sure. makes the channel. So we thank each and every one you guys for being on this on this show with us. And for everyone out there that's watching it, for everyone that watches week in, week out, comments, it's in the live chats. That 10,000, that just, we, yeah, I'd be lying if I said, hey, well, I'm not proud. I'm, I like yeah. having that. But I'm even sure? more proud of the community that we're building within that 10,000 subscriber base. I think it was 10,000 family members. That's why we call it Superman's Comics Family. And FOC calls Corona. <laughs> <laughs> And for the record, I didn't like FOC. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of the FOC. I know that's true. I know that's true. <laughs> I know that's true. That's why I would. I would tell my biggest detractors. I'd be like, my friends don't even like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, <yo. laughs> so for for all you fucking haters out there, say, oh, I ain't fucking doing the show with fucking ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. People inside my circle. <laughs> I didn't like the FOC shit, but. Hey, it rocks. Do do what you got to do, man. Yep. <laughs> so, again, we want to thank Mel and Wolf for being on this episode of the Simple Man's Comics and Friends. And from Brian and Jack, we guys, thank you so much. Make sure if you haven't done so, you subscribe and hit that notification. Also, again, no, the link to Wolf's channel will be in the description of this video. Make sure you guys check out his content. We'll put a link to Mel. Are you got a channel up or no? I got I got some stuff up, but. Just follow follow my channel, get some stock advice. We're gonna do it like that. We just gotta, we just gotta have fun. And, and if anybody wants to come on, I don't give a damn who you are. You wanna come on my channel? Just just subscribe, 
and I'll put the link in there, and I have a whole bunch of live people in it, and we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it rocking. I don't, I don't care who you are. I asked that because Mel had a bunch of stuff up there. He's kind of gone through a renaissance of the channel, but definitely we'll put a link to it in the description of this video. <laughs> With that being said, guys, this is Brian Jack, Superman's Comics and Friends, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.